Hey, welcome back to Streamline Entertainment. It's your boy Marvin. Uh, we're going to get straight into a video. It's a reaction video to Candice Owen talking about PDD lawsuit. Um, the media is trying to cover it up. The weird thing about it, quite a few ac accusations were coming out um, about um, gay relationships and different things. Um, about him look um, I'm not going to pinpoint what he does um, you know in his life how to work that's entirely up to him I've got nothing against that but there are quite a few lawsuits out there on him which for some reason the media has kept it quiet um, something came out a couple of months ago and it, and it all went dead again and I wondered why so I'm just going to listen to this and then we'll comment as we go. Where do we begin? All right. Well, he's changed his name many times over the years. You might know him as Sean Combs, Puff Daddy, Puffy, Puff, P Diddy, or just Diddy, the D, the I, the D, the D, the Y. Okay. Well, there have always been rumors. And quite frankly, I always thought that they were conspiracies because they sounded crazy. First and foremost, rumors that he was gay. Also rumors that he was behind the killing of his quote unquote best friend, the notorious B.I.G., and also that he had something to do with the killing of Tupac. Well, last year, things got interesting because Combs's ex, her name was Cassandra, she went by Cassie, and she filed a federal lawsuit against him in New York alleging years of assaults. Now, again, they dated for like more than 10 years, so she obviously was very close to him and knew his lifestyle. Her lawsuit contained graphic allegations that he raped her in 2018, that he physically abused her, that he intimidated her, that he made her have sex with male escorts while he watched. The lawsuit also alleged that he blew up another artist's car, his name was Kid Cudi, in order to stop him from seeing Cassie rom romantically when him and Cassie split up. I mean, again, all of this sounds insane, if it's true. Well, Kid Cudi thought the accusations were true. He said, yes, that is factually what happened. But of course, Diddy denied those allegations. And he instead came out and said that Cassie was simply trying to blackmail him for $30 million. And by the way, that is plausible, right? We've seen tons of those instances, especially in the era of Me Too. But this one felt a little different because we're like, okay, but she's known you for a very long time. And these allegations are quite weird. But we never got a follow up there because then he very quickly settled with her for an undisclosed amount. And then even more women started coming out saying they were victims of Diddy. And then it seemed like an avalanche and he issued a very strong statement condemning them for essentially extortion attempts and trying to murky his name. So, again, you don't know what's real. You don't know what's not until this recent lawsuit. And this one's different, guys. A man named Rodney Jones has come forward to sue Diddy. And this is not your average lawsuit. I will say right now, many lawsuits are in fact frivolous. I have fought and won frivolous lawsuits. This person, however, his name is Rodney. It's amazing sometimes what comes out of the woodwork. I mean, a lot of people say that um, he had a lot to do with um, what happened to Tupac. In what sense, um, as a sort of, a producer and a singer everyone looked up to. He was one of the top men. And there were reasons for him to have, um, to, <coughs> um, to, to, you know, to be part of Tupac being executed. There's a lot of things. I never really liked um, P. Diddy. I, I, there was always something about him I didn't like. I just couldn't connect with him and I don't know what it was. Me, Jones. He lived, traveled, and he worked with Diddy as a producer, and he is alleging that he has hours upon hours of recorded footage and pictorial evidence, which has been included in this document, to support his claims. And I have to say, these claims seem very credible. Now, to be clear, Rodney, also goes by Lil Rod, uh, is suing Diddy and others, we're gonna get to who those others are, for $30 million, claiming that he was subjected to sexual misconduct for the duration of the production process of an album. It is a 70 page lawsuit that has been filed in the Southern District of New York. And he is claiming that while working on the album and living with Combs in New York, California, Florida, other locations, 
that Diddy repeatedly groped him, touching his, I'm sorry to say this, guys, his anus and his crotch without consent and attempting to groom him into accepting a homosexual relationship by showing him explicit videos of others in Hollywood. Yes, they have named other artists claiming that homosexuality was a normal practice in the music industry. Wow. Well, you've heard things, um, connections with Usher, um, you know, other artists, uh, basically, which are probably just too scared to come forward. Um, I've heard too much in the music industry about things going on that shouldn't, where artists have just said something um, out of the blue. And to be honest, P. Diddy seems to be one of the names that keeps coming up at the end of the day. Yes, he hasn't been charged for anything yet, but don't you think so many, so many people coming out and say P. Diddy is not what um, he makes out to be? And I have to agree with that. I really, really, really do. Um, too many people are saying things. He's also claiming that Diddy would walk around the house naked and force him to watch him shower and is alleging that he told, he went forward and told Diddy's chief of staff, Christina Karam, about this. And Christina came back to him and said, well, you know, Sean will just be Sean. So we're going to go through some of these explosive claims. Again, right at the top, I'm going to make it clear so I don't get sued that these are all allegations. Everything that I'm going to say after this is an allegation that is being claimed by Rodney in this lawsuit document, which we will include as a link for you guys if you're watching this on YouTube. Let's go through the big claims. Ready? Number one, this is perhaps the biggest claim, is that Diddy and his son murdered someone in plain daylight and got away with it. There's apparently a man that they know, that everyone who works with Diddy knows, that they can call and they essentially will get everything cleaned up. And they are implicating the LAPD in this madness because they produced fake reports. And he's got some real good evidence to back up these claims. He says that one evening uh, during a camp that they were running with several musicians, Mr. Combs and Jay Combs were in a heated conversation with somebody named G. And while this conversation was moved out of the studio and into a restroom that was adjacent to where Jones was sitting, he heard approximately two feet away from him again, Mr. Jones is the producer that's suing him, gunshots suddenly ringing out. He recalls hearing multiple gunshots. Mr. Jones immediately went into a state of shock and fear that he would be shot next. He genuinely believed that he would be shot through the door due to how close he was. After the shooting ended, a crowd gathered around the restroom. When the door finally opened, Mr. Combs and his son exited. G was lying on the restroom floor in a fetal position, holding his stomach and bleeding out of his leg and his hip area. Everyone stood around and looked up at him. Frustrated by the lack of aid that was being provided, Mr. Jones, the producer that's suing again, dropped everything, ran to the guy, and immediately began placing pressure. As he was applying pressure on his stomach, he realized that G was gushing blood from another area. He decided to lift G up and place him to sit on the toilet, and he asked the crowd to call the ambulance. Now, here is what is interesting. The ambulance does arrive, uh, and Mr. Combs, according to Mr. Jones, Diddy gives, gives strict instructions to inform the police that he had nothing to do with the shooting. He also forced the producer to lie to the police by telling them that G was shot while standing outside of the studio. And the police just believed this, despite the overwhelming evidence that this shooting did not take place outside of the studio and that it instead took place inside, near the bathroom. There's a lot of things, I think, that um, P. Diddy has got away with um, in his life. And I think one of those reasons is because I think he's got a lot of power in the music world as a producer at the end of the day. And I think he uses heavy handedness to get what he wants. And he's not afraid to hurt people if he has to. Um, But I think a lot of people have had enough now and are coming out to expose him 100%. Um, He includes in his lawsuit this photo of the bathroom of, and we are blurring it here, of the blood in that bathroom. And then it is stunning because he also shows how the media then reported it. 
right? A fake police report was produced, and then fake headlines were the result. This is CBS News. Man shot outside party at Hollywood recording studio. The key word there is outside. How on earth could the LAPD be implicated in lying? Well, he alleges that there is an individual, again, that they know that they can call to clean up any types of murders. And that individual will make sure the right officers write down the fake police reports and that those are then fed to the media to cover up murder. The second big explosive thing that comes from this document are the allegations that Diddy hosts freak-offs, essentially sexual events to procure blackmail on other people in the industry. That They all come and they have these drug-fused parties with underage boys, with underage girls, and throughout this lawsuit, he names multiple current rappers that have been involved in these parties and are there for... I have mentioned one or two that have said something along these lines um, about sometimes these parties and the sort of grooming, as Candy's mentioned, for this. It seems to be, I think, when we get down to the bottom of that, I think this has been going on for many, 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 many years. It's like I said, it's an allegation, but for me, when a lot of people are still coming forward and mentioning his name, there's got to be something in it. If it was one or two, you think, right, oh, hold on, um, maybe they're just trying to get money. But when there's more than 10, even 15, 20, that I've heard over the last couple of years before this comes to light, it just makes you wonder what the hell's going on. And because he's got power, the, the, you know, the police turning the blind eye to him, because they know who he is. You know, once you've got a bit of power and you've got money and you've seen as the, 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 the kingpin, a lot can get done behind people's backs and behind the public's back at the end of the day. Sometimes we're thinking, that, you know, these guys are perfect and they're far from it. Existing under blackmail, right? So if you, if you can suddenly record somebody and they're hooking up with a person that is underage, if you're doing drugs and Diddy has cameras on it, well then Diddy owned you. Which leads me to think, what even is gangster rap? It's a question that I have been asking a lot. It, it seems to me that there is something intentional, that they are intentionally feeding us filth via the media. In just two weeks, I lost 36 pounds. I have more, more energy, better mood. I feel attractive again. And you can do it too. And I wonder if a lot of these artists are existing within this blackmail ring. And also, where have we heard this before? Oh, yes, of course, Jeffrey Epstein, who was bizarrely protected. He was clearly an asset of not just the CIA, but also potentially the Mossad, very much involved with the Mossad over in Israel. And he, too, had so much access, so much wealth, and he got away with it for years, procuring what very clearly is blackmail on politicians. So what we are recognizing is that this ring also exists within Hollywood. Explosive allegation number three was that there's even a Ghislaine Maxwell, so to speak, a, a madame, and that is the other woman that is listed in this lawsuit, his chief of staff, Christina Karam. I don't know how journalists aren't interested in figuring out who this woman is. Her job, as alleged in this lawsuit, was to keep Diddy high. I'm going to tell you what this lawsuit says explicitly about her. According to Mr. Jones, during the 13 months he lived and traveled with Diddy, he witnessed defendant Karam openly order her assistants to keep Mr. Combs high off of gummies and pills. Defendant Karam required all employees, from the butler, the chef, to the housekeepers, to walk around with a pouch or a fanny pack filled with cocaine, GHB, ecstasy, marijuana gummies, and Tukey, I don't know if I'm saying that right, that's a pink drug that is a combination of ecstasy and cocaine. It was important to the defendant, Karam, to have Mr. Combs' drug of choice immediately ready whenever he asked for it. Wow. She also ordered, allegedly, sex. Wow. It seems like it's been organized and a lot of people, a lot of the younger rappers, who've seen this are probably tight-lipped because they were a part of it and they don't want to be embarrassed if it comes out to the media. That's what it seems like to me. 
and probably half of them really did know what they were going into, whereas a lot of them did, and probably are embarrassed to say it. Sex workers and prostitutes for Mr. Combs and would order the distribution of ecstasy, cocaine, GHB, ketamine, marijuana, and mushrooms to Mr. Combs and his celebrity guests who were present on his rented yacht and in his homes throughout LA, New York City, and Miami. And he alleges that he was also forced to keep that drug in a pouch on him at all times against his will. Again, this is explosive. He even lists everybody in the ring. He says that it is his Diddy's son, Justin, that solicits the prostitutes and the underage girls and the sex workers, allegedly, for these freak-offs. He also lists Stevie J, uh, who recruits the sex workers and attends and participates in the freak-offs. And another young man named Brendan Paul, who works as Mr. Combs' mule. He acquires and distributes all of the drugs and the guns. Again, we won't have time to go through everything in this document, but I encourage you guys to read it because it is stunning. And yes, Christina Karam apparently even instructs them to, to mix those drugs into the liquor when these women are invited over. So why is the media not interested in this story? It's, it's, like we said, it's a cover-up. It's a cover-up for some reason. Maybe they were told from a high, someone higher, high position not to say anything because the media are normally all over it. You get bits and bobs, but they're afraid of this man and I don't know why. Is he part of these, the, the sort of high system that basically what he does is a bit untouchable? It seems that way. Well, here is explosive allegation number four coming from this lawsuit. That the person who sits at the top of this ring potentially is Sir Lucian Grain. She is the CEO of Universal Music Group. He is also being sued. He has also been named as well as Universal Music Group. And he is, as a fact, one of the most powerful men in Hollywood. He runs, again, Universal Music Group, which is huge. Well, Rodney, the producer, is alleging that when Lucian would visit Diddy's house, the two of them would go into Diddy's bedroom and be locked up in there for hours. What, what does that mean? What are we supposed to think of that? By the way, I looked into Lucien, obviously, because I was fascinated by this document, and I find it really bizarre that he completely changed his name. He used to be Michael G., the son of Cecil G., who was a huge tailor in London. I found that in this old article, The Guardian, the headline is, Forgotten and Overlooked, How Jewish Designers Dressed the Beatles and Changed Global Fashion. And in it, in this article, there's a picture of Lucien. He was then, again, Michael G., He's sitting with his father, Cecil G., and it's just bizarre that also his father changed his name. In the article, it tells you that his father used to be Sasha Goldstein. So Sasha Goldstein became Cecil G., who gave birth to Michael G., who is now Lucien Grange. I mean, the totally bizarre rabbit hole mm. if you guys want to look into it. I just thought it was weird. I sort of cursory search and found all of that. Uh, perhaps most crucial, though, in the lawsuit is that unbeknownst to Lucien, Diddy also has a ton of hidden cameras all throughout his house, including in his bedroom, which would perhaps suggest that the blackmail runs both ways. Maybe he also has blackmail on Lucien Grange. Again, I don't know. I'm just telling you what's in this lawsuit and what we can derive from it if these allegations are true. And again, the fact that there are so many photos in this document... Look, um, I think that everyone's, why it is, hasn't it really come to light? Because there's people at that party that shouldn't have been there and that don't want to be exposed to the media and to family and the public. This is what we're all about. And I think PDD's kind of clever because he's got things on people at the end of the day, not just sometimes being heavy handed, but he's probably got video evidence sort of, you do this for me and I'll do this for you. And sometimes when people are on drugs or parties go over the top, they're recorded and he can say to the police, look, there they are, that's in there, doing this, doing that ever. Think of it what you like, that's how it works. And at least proves that he does have evidence of some sort. Which brings us to number five, and this is pretty explosive that we can garner that Cat Williams was right. 
don't know who Cat Williams is. He is the comedian. He's been a comedian for a very long time. And he always just seemed like the funny guy in Hollywood, the funny guy amongst black America. And last year, people were wondering whether or not he was crazy because he went on somebody's show and said that there was a ring in Hollywood. He actually named Diddy explicitly. He implied that Diddy was a gangster um, and that he had something to do with bizarre sex parties. Well, now Cat Williams is on Joe Rogan, the Joe Rogan podcast, and he is trying to signal to the world that people in Hollywood, that Hollywood altogether was built as a psychological weapon, so to speak. Take a listen to Cat Williams in his own words. Stop working for your money and let your money work for Hollywood is not really there to entertain you. It's a front. It's a front. It's a front to make people think that this is glamorous. But I think there's a lot of um, nastiness and underhanded business deals, party deals that go on. And I think this is why a lot of people who go to the parties don't come out about it at the end of the day because it could expose them. Like, he was there, he was there, she was there. It just goes on and on. It's, you know, it's a party in itself. Like, that's great that that happens. But um, propaganda is something that is important to all civilizations. And those movies are successful. And so they continue this relationship. And... You become a bit of a propaganda arm <clears throat> for the government. And in turn, they don't f with you. <laughs> That's what makes information so powerful is, you know, you don't care how people feel about the ritual. It's about does following the ritual work. Yeah. And so you can fool yourself into thinking there isn't one but the evidence will be clear so like when i when i was like uh all oh, these guys are wearing dresses and everybody's like oh he keeps talking about people wearing dresses no it's that not is it's, a weird thing. it's not like that look at it from a different way look at it show me one person that ever wore a dress in hollywood unsuccessfully <laughs> So maybe that's the answer to why the media seems to be burying the story. You can't find it anywhere. Maybe it's because, well, a lot of them are implicated. This is the case of a dog that is not barking right now. It suggests to us that our media is definitively run by some sort of a gang that has amassed a ton of power and wealth via sexual blackmail. Again, we keep hearing this over and over again. At what point are we going to accept that this is true? when we wonder why our media is in lockstep lying to us. He's talking about a ritual where they, they don't even care. It's performative. They're going to keep wearing men wear dresses until we accept that this is this is the new thing. He is implying that... Hop yeah, yeah. It'll all come out in the wash, but it'll be too late then because a lot of the damage is done. And a lot of people who thought, oh, this guy's great or she was great or he was great will find out these people have been exposed to a hell of a lot. And it's been going on for many, 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 many years. Even before P. Diddy, I think it was going on in um, Hollywood. Because we hear things, um, Jeffrey Epstein, um, his parties and uh, whatnot. A lot of different things happen where it's big news and then it just goes dead um, for a minute at the end of the day. So I hope this is this lawsuit and this is sorted out for him because I think it's going to expose a lot of people at the end of the day, a lot of people could go missing. This is very, very serious because, like she said, Candy Sewing, um, PDD, is a gangster. Hollywood intentionally was sent to make it so that we would accept the trans agenda, which is now everywhere. It wasn't here, now it's everywhere. And of course, if you think about the intelligence agencies potentially being involved, that they are in lockstep with our policing, but the LAPD at least is implicated in this as we understand it. If they are in lockstep with also journalists, well, then you have a case of what we recognized during COVID. It very much seemed like people were being sent to us to tell us things that we just knew was not true, but they were gonna keep saying it until it was. 
So I want you to deeply consider that plausibility, that there is a ring that is operating. It's almost, to me, the only thing that makes sense. It's the only thing that adds up. There's just been so much obvious lying that is happening in the mainstream media. There has just been so much in terms of the demonic and overtly sexual agendas that are being packaged for children. I have said this for a while, and it's very clear to me that we are all being groomed as a society to accept pedophilia. That they're just going, this is, this is totally fine. That seems to be... That's powerful. That is just so, so powerful. I was actually going down this route at the end of the day where this is leading. We know that this, you know, demonic um, side behind this, which is very, very worrying at the end of the day. And paedophilia is something massive all over the world now, which needs to be controlled and stopped. We've got so many um, agents uh, who are trying to protect children over here, which I'm totally for. Um, just public people who's gone into the um, uh, built uh, a profile to save children and stop them being exposed to this wickedness. It's just not good. Coming down the pipeline, it's clear that there are politicians that are passing pieces of legislation through to support this perverted agenda. It's clear that the celebrities are supporting a perverted agenda. The music makers, well, maybe every single one of them, these individuals, are being blackmailed. Again, I think that is the only thing that makes perfect sense. And that's all I'm going to say about that. I talk about preborn a lot on my show. and That's it. Wow. Um, I think make of it what you want. I do think that there's a lot going on that the tabloids know, but for some reason, they're not saying anything. I mean, I think it's something above P. Diddy, um, the Hollywoods, um, the glamour, the show. There's so much um, going on that we don't know about, but it is being exposed now. And... P. Diddy is certainly not an angel, and I think there's a lot of artists um, out there. If he got exploited and he got done or went to prison for it, I'm sure a lot of other people's um, names will be tarnished as well. Let me know what you think, because like, this is getting really deep now. Don't forget to subscribe to Streamline Entertainment. Let me know your thoughts. Um, leave a text, and I'll get back to you. Uh, wherever you are in the world, goodbye. Take care of yourself.